Hi, I'm Marius Masselar with MacTuts, bringing you another step closer to mastering your Mac. Today, we're talking about some of the basics of terminal navigation, how to move through your file system, create, and delete files. Let's start with the basics, accessing the terminal. To get started, you can either open the terminal by navigating to Applications and Utilities and finding the icon, or you can save some time and get used to typing by hitting the Spotlight shortcut, which is Apple Spacebar, and typing Terminal. Once Terminal is open, you'll be presented with this basic view. In essence, what you're looking at is the equivalent of opening Finder and navigating to your user directory. Thus, this is the same as this. The part on the left displays your current directory. That's the name of your computer, and that's your username. So right now, in the terminal, we're looking at our user folder just like in the finder here. To the right, with the blinking cursor, is the input area known as the prompt, because it's prompting you to tell it what to do. An easy task that you'll be performing a lot is finding out what files and folders exist in the given directory. Type ls, which is terminal shorthand for list, and you'll see a chart of everything in that directory. ls is an example of a terminal command, and now you've learned your first one. Commands are the instructions that you give to your computer via the terminal, and while the commands themselves are plentiful and varied, their syntax is consistent, as you'll learn along the way. Now let's wander around a bit. Say we'd like to access something in our Documents folder. To accomplish this, we need to do what's called changing directory. It's the same as double-clicking to open a folder in Finder. Terminal commands are more intuitive than you might think, so to perform a change of directory, we simply type cd, followed by the name of the folder we'd like to dive into, in our case, Documents. Note that there's always a space between the command and the argument, or the subject of your command. The terminal now indicates that we're in our Documents folder. We're going to have to look at all the files in this folder, but this time I'll introduce you to the second half of the terminal command syntax the parameters or options. Let's type ls again to list files in the directory, but this time we'll append a "-a", to the command before hitting enter. This command is used to tell the computer that you want it to show you all files in that directory, including hidden system files. Revealing hidden files in a directory is something you may need to do fairly frequently, and now you know a way to accomplish it much faster than if you were using the finder. Better still, you now understand the basic format of a terminal instruction, a command, followed by its optional parameters, and finally, its argument. Now let's say we've found a file in our documents that we'd like to edit. To open it, you simply type open, followed by the name of the file. If your file name is long and you don't feel like typing it all out though, you can take advantage of Terminal's autocomplete feature by typing the first few letters, and then hitting the tab key. The autocorrect system works by looking for files in the current directory that match the letters you've typed. I'm going to hit enter to open this file, and it's open in my default application for that file type, in this case text edit, and I'm free to work with it as I please. But what if I want to create a new text file? Normally I'd have to open text edit, then I'd have to go to file, and then I'd have to go to new, and it's tedious. In the terminal, this couldn't be simpler. I want to create a new text file on my desktop, but you'll notice that terminal is still showing the documents directory. There are several different ways I can get to the desktop from here. I could use the cd dot dot command to move back up one level in the file system, back to my user folder in this case, and then use cd desktop to get there. I could also simply use cd slash users slash mactuts slash desktop to get there immediately from wherever I am, although this involves typing out the full path to the directory. The final and simplest method is to use a relative path command, which looks like this. Because both the documents and desktop folders share a common parent directory, we can use this so-called relative path command to quickly navigate between them. Sometimes, if you need to work with a file or directory that's buried deep or has a very long and complicated name, you can save yourself some time by typing your command and then dragging and dropping the target file or folder into the terminal window right from Finder, like this. Similarly, if you want to double check exactly where you've ended up, simply type PWD, which stands for Present Working Directory, and Terminal will show you a clear path to your location. Now the command for creating a file is called touch, so if we wanted to create a text file called bananas, 
we would type touchbananas.txt. You'll notice that the file has now appeared on my desktop, ready for editing. Now, one thing that the terminal is not incredibly intuitive about is handling spaces in file or folder names. If we wanted to call the file bananamuffins.txt instead, you might imagine that we would type touch bananamuffins.txt. If you're following along, I encourage you to give this a try. As you'll see, Terminal interprets this as you wanting to create two separate files, one called banana and the other called muffins.txt. It's not quite what I had in mind, Terminal, though it's useful because it's taught us that the Terminal can create multiple files quickly using a single command. To clarify what we mean, we'll retype the command, this time putting the file name in quotation marks, touch bananamuffins.txt. Ta-da! By the way, you can create many types of files like this, not just text files. If I needed a Word file, for instance, to save my genius banana muffin recipe into, I could simply type touch bananamuffins.doc to get started. And remember, you have to put your file name in this case in quotation marks because it's two separate words, and you'll end up with two files otherwise. There we go. Now let's do some cleaning up, shall we? Since we know how to create files, it would help if we could delete them too. But because we've learned the value of backups, we're going to make sure to preserve our precious banana muffin recipe first. I want to keep bananamuffins.doc safe in my documents folder, so I'm going to copy it there using the cp command. The syntax for this command is straightforward and should start to seem familiar. It's simply cp followed by the file name, in this case bananamuffins.doc, and remember to put it in quotation marks, followed by the path to the directory you want to save it in. In our case, the full command looks like this. Boy, this sure takes a while to type though, doesn't it? If only there were a better way. Well, there is. If you remember our relative path commands, we can accomplish this same thing like this. That's much cleaner. Now let's use Finder to double check that it worked. Yep, there it is. Now then, the command for deleting a file is rm, and it's one you've got to be careful with since you don't want to accidentally delete anything you didn't intend to. There is no trash bin in the terminal world. We just want to delete some excess banana shenanigans though, so let's start by removing that orphaned muffins.txt file we've got lying sadly on our desktop. The command for this is simply rm muffins.txt. Just to be on the safe side though, you can use the dash i parameter to toggle interactive mode, where the terminal will explicitly confirm your deletion command before executing it. In this case, asking us if we really want to remove muffins.txt. We can then answer either yes, or simply y to proceed. But this still leaves us with some files. Rather than deleting them manually one by one, we can take advantage of Terminal's intelligence to save some time. Since they all begin with the word banana, we can use the asterisk, known as the wildcard character, to ask Terminal to find and delete all files in the current working directory with file names that contain the word banana. So type in the following command, rm dash i, banana, and then asterisk, and hit enter. Terminal will automatically find all the desired files and prompt you to delete them. If you're feeling confident and want to save time, drop the dash i option to execute the command immediately and not be prompted for each file on an individual basis. You're doing great so far, and there's just one last set of basic tasks that I want to teach you in this tutorial. Because we're busy people with many files, it would be helpful if we stayed somewhat organized. Thus, instead of leaving that poor bananamuffins.doc backup file out in the open in our documents folder, we're going to give it a new home inside of a folder called recipes. So first things first, we need to get to our documents folder. Now this isn't the case for us, but if we were buried somewhere deep in the file system and didn't feel like typing cd dot dot a bunch of times to get back out, you could use the convenient cd tilde command to zoom back to your user folder immediately. From there, we simply need to type cd documents, and we're good to go. Now, if we type ls again to remind ourselves of what's in there, you'll notice that there is no recipes folder. Looks like we're going to have to create one. Luckily, this is as simple as typing mkdir recipes. 
Once you hit enter, the folder is created for you by this make dir command, which means make directory. So now we just need to get the recipe into this new folder. But rather than copying it over and deleting the original, we can simply move it. To do this, we'll introduce the last new command that we'll learn in this tutorial. Type mv banana muffins dot doc and then the path to our recipes folder and you'll accomplish just that. Incidentally, you can also use the mv command to rename a file if you'd like. Let's give it a try. First, we need to cd into our recipes folder. And then, we can use the following command to rename the file. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, don't worry. The terminal is a completely different paradigm for computer interaction, one that takes time to get used to, and we've only just scratched the surface. But if you're interested in learning more, stay tuned for future tutorials where we'll dig a little deeper. In the meantime, you can read up on the syntax we've explored today and learn about the various parameters for each command by typing man, which is short for manual, followed by the command name. Man ls, for instance, we'll show you the usage options for the list command. Once you've read through it, you can simply hit the Q key to close the manual and return to the prompt. That's all I've got time for now, but I hope you've learned something, and I look forward to seeing you back for the next tutorial.